with the Holy Spirit to just be quieting our minds and helping us to focus on you, Lord. We're just so grateful to um, meet, even if it is virtually, Lord. So we just thank you for what you're doing.
Good evening, everybody. Uh, how you doing? Oh, there's my dog. That's one of them. You should see my other one wandering around. She's little wiener dogs around there. I'm in the. These are apple trees behind me. I'm in an old farm near my house. And uh, <laughs> you'll notice the camera change or an angle change because my wife said that it uh, last video accentuated my boiler for some reason. I don't know. So uh, hopefully this makes my wife feel a little better and a little. You guys, you guys will be impressed with my camera angle. I don't know. Anyhow, uh, an update. I just wanted to say uh, <clears throat> the COVID scare that we had in our house was actually my uh, oldest son. He had a confirmed case of COVID, so we were under lockdown, and he was the only one that got it, and his symptoms were mild. Thank God, and uh, everybody recovered. So uh, I'll be able to come visit Hill and House. And uh, I'm looking forward to that because uh, I was going to, and then we got the positive uh, result from my son, so that was not so great. So moving on, we're, we're reading out of the book of uh, Luke. Actually, I really like this spot. You can see my dogs wandering around; they're just chilling. And uh, anyway, I'm reading out of the book of Luke, and uh, I'm gonna kind of go between books because as I was as I was reading Luke. It reminded me of another store, another book in the Bible, and uh, I got some video for that too. So uh, more video, but uh, I want. Oh, somehow I jumped to Psalms. I don't know how that happened, but the uh, so I started reading out of the, uh, verse. Uh, actually, I started reading out of verse one. I'm gonna be honest, and. Uh, and it said that the priests and the scribes were asking Jesus, and uh, I'll read verse one. It says, uh, verse one, Luke 20, uh, amplified. On one of these days, as Jesus was instructing the people in the temple, temple area, and preaching the good news of the gospel, the chief priests and scribes, along with the elders, confronted him. Tell us by what kind of authority you are doing these things, or who is it? who is the one who gave you this authority Jesus replied I will ask you the question you tell me the baptism of John the Baptist of course was it from heaven that it that is ordained by God or from men so I'm gonna skip skip ahead a little bit it says uh, I did it oh, I guess I'm not they, 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 they discussed it and debated it amongst themselves saying if we say it's from heaven he will say well, why do you not believe him but if you say it's from men all the people will stone us, for they firmly are convinced that John was the prophet. So they replied, they did not know from where it came. Then Jesus said to them, nor am I telling you by what kind of authority I do these things. And I was like, nice. Um, so I'm going to, this is verse 9 now of, of the Amplified Version, and it's called the parable of the vineyard owner, owner. And as I was reading this, it reminded me of another story. And so just let me read it. And uh, just so you know, uh, in some of my notes that I was looking, um, in Isaiah, Isaiah uh, 5, 1 through 7, but in actually first verse 1, it says, that refers to uh, the Jewish people as the chosen people and is a song of my beloved about his vineyard. And his vineyard were the people, the Jewish people. And so that's what's referring to it in this in this uh, uh, when you read this and the uh, the rebels. If I, had to, I didn't quite catch it either because I had to study. So the the rebels are the are the people that the the, the people that are leasing the land in this pro, uh, parable were the were, were the religious leaders. So I'm going to get on. A man planted a vineyard and leased leased it to tenant farmers and went to it onto a journey for a long time into another country. At harvest time, he sent his servant, a representative. To the tenants so that they would give him his share of the fruit of the vineyard but the tenants beat the servant and sent him away empty-handed so again he sent another servant they also beat him and dishonored and and treated him disgracefully and sent him away empty-handed as he sent yet a third this one too they wounded and threw out of the vineyard then the owner of the vineyard said what shall i do i will send my beloved son perhaps they will respect have respect for him but when the tenants saw them, they discussed among themselves, saying, 
this is the man that this is the heir let us kill him so that our inheritance will oh, i love those birds ocd or <laughs> adhd much eh? uh this man is the heir let us kill him so that he inherited the inheritance will be ours so they threw the son of out of the vineyard and kill them. He will come. Uh, oh, he will kill them. What then will the owner of the vineyard do to them? He will come and put these tenants to death, and he will give the vineyards to others. When the chief priests and scribes and elders heard this, they said, May it never be. But Jesus looked at them and said, Then looked at them and said, What then? Is the meaning of this when, when it was written that every stone oh sorry the very stone which the builders rejected became the chief cornerstone so now that story while I was reading it reminded me of, of uh, John chapter 15 verse 1 and and I just I, I wanted to share it with you because actually I was on holidays I went on holidays with my wife uh, spring break and we were in a Soyuz and they have oh, acres hundreds hundreds and hundreds and acres of just vineyards rows upon rows upon rows and I remember David preaching actually in Northridge and um, and he was talking about the vine keepers and um, and and uh, and Jesus being the being the says yeah, actually uh, let me read it let me read it this is uh, John 15 verse 1 out of the NIV version I am the true vine and my father is the gardener he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes instead of, so that it will even be more fruitful and I, I'm not, not, not even exaggerating I was driving with my wife and I stopped him I'm in my truck and I pull over and my wife said oh, what are you doing now so I I, 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 uh, <laughs> I stood in the middle of the vineyard and it was funny because at one side you could see where it was unpruned. Actually, like these, these are an old uh, uh, farmer's field. Nobody prunes these apple trees anymore. And so you see the vineyard looking like that on one side and then the other side you see it completely pruned, like, like in the video. Hey you guys, this is uh, Steve Bennett and I just wanted to show you something. I've been reading out of, uh, these are vines, wine uh, for, from a vineyard. And John chapter 15 verse 1 talks about the vine keeper I am the and uh, I just show you what Jesus is talking about here's after here's what the vines look like after the vine keeper is taking care of it and you can see it's a pretty good uh, analogy all the the waste and the that, that keeps the, the, the vineyard vine from growing to its maximum potential and producing the most. The stuff that the plant doesn't need is left on the ground. And here's what the vine keeper does. Trims it for its maximum health. I'll talk about more about, more about it later. Okay, bye. And I thought, holy smokes, this is a perfect, uh, perfect expression of what I, th I think Jesus is talking about. And um, I know it keeps jumping back, but the, I wanted to, I wanted to show you what uh, what it says here. I am the true vine, and my Father. I know I'm reading it again, but I. And here comes a great big helicopter. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of me and bears that bears no fruit. While well, every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, so that they will be even more fruitful. There she is. And I think, and if you take a look at the video, you see on on, on the, pay attention to all the, everything that was cut and how how much was cut off, and everything that was left on the ground. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and, with, and, and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into fire and burned. If you remain in me, my words remain in you. And whatever you wish will be done for you. 
and it will be done for you. This is my father's. This is to my father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. In verse nine, as the father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love and keep my commands, and I will remain. And you will remain in my love, just as I've kept my father's commands and in his love. And I started. I I. Uh, I was looking at that and and I started to to think about the uh, the the symbolism of the the, the branches and, and everything laid on the ground and I started thinking about ladies and gentlemen I started thinking about recovery and 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 some of the things that we come we, we come to Helen the Helen house mission house and what we come bringing from our past and we and I don't want to say baggage because that's not what if it, it it's just everything that we have hanging on us hanging in our hearts hanging in our heads the the, the lies that we carry with us the the uh, the hurt that we carry with us and it says the the this is the part I, I honestly the part that I I, I, I just I can't get enough of this version. I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of me that bears no fruit. Hate. Self, south, self, doubt. The insults that we were told, that we, that we hold, that we, we believe as truths. The lies that we hold in our, 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 our hearts about us and who we are. Bear no fruit. The, I know some of us, and I know my son, and I actually, I, I'm being be honest too. Everybody shares a, a certain amount of anxiety, and and uh, bears no fruit. It it serves us no purpose. Our worries serve us no pur purpose. Trusting in Him and believing in Christ and who He is is He's. The vine keeper of all that garbage that we carry with us, and we we follow, we follow God and 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 follow Christ and like like in, in back in Luke where it says he is the 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 uh, cornerstone. And I don't know if you guys, people who you guys do much, have been a part of much uh, uh, construction in the past or 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 are tradespeople, but I know. In my job, I'm construction, and I, and I built a ton of stuff. I'm a welder, and there's an, uh, uh, we used to we were building this massive, massive boiler. It was a power plant essentially, and there was called it was a benchmark, and all, all, every every measurement in the whole building came, went back to that benchmark. And years ago, a couple of years ago, my wife and I we went to uh, actually we went on a trip, and there was a church, and uh, that church was made from that cornerstone all measurements were made from that cornerstone taken from there and that's what Christ is saying in 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 Luke 20 being the cornerstone and i uh we use Christ as that cornerstone and him being the vine and, and our father heavenly father being the vine keeper we stay with the cornerstone we stay with with Jesus, I'm not kidding. I'm not the the the. Well, you've heard my testimony. You've heard my testimony, and and I'm telling you, a lot has been trimmed. A lot of has been trimmed. A lot of who, who who I thought I was, and I wasn't, has been trimmed. A lot of who I thought I was incapable, what I thought I was incapable of doing has been trimmed my lack of potential because I was always told I was going to be nothing has been trimmed the uh, the lie that I wasn't lovable has been trimmed the lie that I was never going to be anything trimmed and gentlemen and ladies I can't 
I can't. I know. I, I, I can't. I can't. I can't stress enough how much a relationship with God has changed my life, and it can change your life. And if you use Him as the benchmark, all that, all that that we carry, will be trimmed. All that. Take a look. At, take a look on the ground, or remember what on my video, what was on the ground. We could be the new. It sounds ridiculous, I know when I put it like this, but it's, we could be like the new vine, clean, clean, and, and, and never have our past held against us. Never have, have, have your, our, your garbage brought against us. Never have you are worthless brought against us. Never have shame for what we've done in the past brought against us because the cornerstone of everything has washed has washed us clean and here's the here's the kicker ladies and gentlemen and I the kicker is the trauma can be washed away too the trauma the, of, of the, the, the scarring the hurt can be washed away and if it can't be completely washed away it can help you at the very least survive through it until you get better until until you find somebody to help you get better. I, uh, I just hope, I, I see, I see the, 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 the uh, I see you guys, and I see the struggles that we all share, and I see how a, a lot of young men have beaten themselves up in the past, and can't forgive for what they've done, I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now, the vine keeper can clean it up. He says, I forgive you. You believe in me, I forgive you. Your sins are washed clean. I will not hold them against you. And if he doesn't hold them against you, you don't need to hold them against you again. I hope, my sincere hope, Every time I talk to you, ladies and gentlemen, is is that there is healing. That there is healing with your walk in sobriety. There is healing from your past hurt. There is healing from the shame. Because it's possible, I'm telling you right now, it is possible. It is so possible that 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 that, that it doesn't it doesn't need to be that burden that that you can you can be free of it and i just it says and this this is the other thing too i i i i just looked at my notes and that made me think of this too christ himself was rejected the cornerstone that was rejected the the the, the religious leaders are trying to tease him, or trying to trick him, trying to snag him. All through the New Testament, you see Jesus hanging out with people that the leaders say weren't the best people to be hanging around with. That say, why is he hanging around with the sinners? He loves every one of us. He loves every one of us. And no matter what people have said about you, no matter what they've said about me, he loves us. And that is the key to the whole thing. And he forgives us. And he will not hold it against us. And uh, that's about it in a nutshell, you guys. It's uh, it, I know it seems simple. It's, it's a kind of a simplified version. But I just wanted to uh, share it with you. I felt that I should share it. it wasn't I know it's kind of not the whole loop. But uh, I, I, uh, I don't know. I just felt led to share it with you guys. And uh, let me just pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for sharing the time with the men of Helen and the ladies of Mission and everybody watching. I pray that it's touched somebody's heart. I pray that they reach out. And I just... 
thank you for the opportunity again, Lord Jesus. And I thank you for each and every man and woman that is currently going through their struggle. And I pray that you are with them and that the pain of their trauma is erased. And I pray that it becomes healed. And I pray for the shame to be wiped away. And I pray for direction. I pray for direction, a path for each and every one of them, a path that carries them for the rest of their life, a path that is clear of what is right and what is wrong, a path, a path that just is directed by you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So for those of you, again, I know I, I forgot to do it at the beginning. My name is Steve Bennett. You can find me on uh, uh, Facebook. You can reach out, chat to me if you uh, if you prayed today, and uh, you can reach out to uh, Northwest Church. Dave Buzza too. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And I uh, hope I get to see you guys. Well, actually, I will get to see you guys in the next couple of days after this video. And uh, I hope you have a great week. Take care.